Hi and welcome back to my playthrough of Masters of the Universe Fields of Eternia. The board game is still quite a mouthful. Honestly, I do think I am okay rules-wise. If not, then I have simply forgotten, but I think I will simply carry on. We are currently in round, I don't know, indeed it's round 8, I believe, out of 12. And again, it's not like if Faker is making it here, we immediately uh, into Castle Greyskull we will lose. It's only when Faker is in Castle Greyskull and we will trigger this event or he will enter afterwards. So I think from what I understand it's timed relatively okay so he will make it there. So we will have we seem to have the full amount of rounds available. Still, we really haven't done an awful lot of progress. Tila is pretty shaken. She would heal one point of damage automatically at the end of her activation this round. Alternatively, I could simply take a rest action with her, which is only possible during a night turn. Something I really have to figure out. Apart from that, I think everyone else is in okay shape. Problem is we have zero money right now. So we won't purchase any amazing stuff. One thing that I was really thinking about was to move Man at Arms into Mountains of Perpetua, levy some troops there and then maybe with his next activation send them there and then he will maybe also move towards that direction or something like that because ultimately I want to get rid of those guys because they will be used in this heroic epic combat between those two. It's not being mentioned in the rules for the let's say solo game but I'm relatively certain they will use those guys mainly a symbol similar to um, basically bosses. So I think I will I think I will follow that plan through actually. So we are moving Man at Arms in here. This would give us one more Eternium. That's never a bad thing. With his second action, he will. Yeah, levy. I think yeah, three troops. Yeah, yeah, we have to do that. We might lose then control of that area, but I'm still okay with that. And that's already the entirety of his turn. And honestly, for Tila, I think I will take a rest action. So I will need to spend both of her action to heal up to four points of damage. So yeah, let's simply do that. Again, she would heal one point, but then she's still down to only three life points left. So I think we have to do something about that. So now we will fully heal her. This concludes her turn as well. So this round might be relatively quick. And last but not least, we have Stratos. Unfortunately, we can't use his flight ability because again, we are out of money. So what we could do down here is something very similar, basically preparing for a fight rather sooner than later by simply levying some troops in here for his first action with his second action. He could go for a move here, but again, it doesn't really matter. We could maybe, we want to consider going for that quest round next. On the other hand, we have a good amount of space spells available so he might still make it our combat deck is nice and I, I really feel we have to make some progress so yeah let's move him here preparationally that is and then we see how things go but that's already the end of the round at the end of his activation he gets to rest automatically for one point because again it's a night turn so at least he is fully healed still not sure if he's going to make it to Beastman. Okay, let's move into the next round to come. First of all, we will trigger the, it's not the last event, it's the third event actually. And this one says Faker travels. If Faker has not appeared, place Faker in the caverns of Rakash. Faker will activate at the end of the round, moving towards Castle Greyskull with one movement point. And then yeah, we have the final event here. So from now on, we can kind of ignore those events of course the last one will matter because this will definitely make us lose the game so yeah we will bring him out here and again he says will activate at the end of the round so he will even with this round he will already start to move towards castle grayskull right now we can't fight him and he will also ignore any soldiers until he is revealed and I think then he really counts as a normal enemy. But until then, we firmly believe that this is He-Man returning from his journeys. Let's not forget our income. And that's nine. I counted things through. So at least, yeah, we have some liquidity. 
and I think we I have to really make a call now. I have a second look at some of these items and or vehicles that are available here. I think for the, for the spells I um, have a good overview. We have nine money and I think we have one discount on both actually. Yeah, indeed. We basically have a discount on all three categories, including the spell status. So one less. Yeah, two more here during each round of epic combat. And we would even gain one shield. That's really a massive one. If we would give this now to men at arms, he would be in a perfect shape. On the other hand, giving this now to Stratos would really help him as well too, right? And in theory, we could really yeah, we could actually trigger that fight right now, but no, you would basically buy your stuff at the end of your turn. So even though we could have Man at Arms go first, but then our Man at Arms would equip that item. So he can't buy it for him. Uh, for Stratos, that's a little bit different for the spells though, right? Because you can cast them anywhere. Um, but I think we don't need to do that round after round. I think, I, <laughs> at least I hope we still have some time. So we could, I still think we should give this to Stratos because this is really powerful and Man at Arms already is, I think, equipped enough. He has some items. We could still debate if we want to get him something because he will not attack triclops this round no i think not so we could still give him something from here the problem is there is not an awful lot for him right now we could then still debate let's put five aside for now so this is for the blaster hawk we will totally give to stratos which means we have four left or three left um because of our discount maybe yeah maybe we can still go for another spell Bell. Because again, those surges are really nice. Play this during combat with an enemy here to activate the surge effect of your current weapon. And for men at arms, for example, this could be his melee weapon, the maze. After drawing your last combat card, draw another one. Play one and discard the other. Not sure how this is actually working together with a search ability because again these spells are typically triggered after we have drawn those cards. Play this with an enemy to activate the search effect of your current weapon. I still think we would draw a card and would be able to replace one. That's how I would maybe rule it out. The other one, the arm cannon, simply gives us two initiative which is huge. Having initiative in this game is huge because again, you do damage first, it's not simultaneous damage. So having the search, I think it makes sense. So yeah, let's definitely consider that here. Yeah, we still have to take his turn, of course. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. There is one problem though. We still have to make it back towards Castle Grayskull. Um, we have these towers, which allows us to fast travel, but still maybe we need to keep one hero behind, maybe Tila herself. Yeah, that's something worth considering. So with our action, with Man at Arms, we will go first, I believe. We will move here and should we spend the money now? We still have this, we still have the money. But honestly, no, I think let's do that. I, let's do that. For him, we want to make sure he will be fine. He shouldn't take any damage whatsoever. So yeah, let's spend the coin in order to draw two encounters here. <laughs> the hundred need is back. <laughs> officially hate this fella and we have Orko, Orko. oh no this chain oh this could really change all our plans because if we get him we would still get an upgrade um but it costs us too money and then we wouldn't go for that spell which wouldn't necessarily terrible depends now a little bit on the special ability of Orko. i don't know this actually as a free action Roll two dice. If you roll two or more successes, reveal the top card of the spell deck. If it is combat only, put it in. Oh, otherwise resolve it immediately as though it had been played from your hand. If you roll two blanks, discard or close guy. Yeah, that makes sense. That's very thematic, actually. Yeah, that's not the... Um, this is good. So the plus two, I think we still had one more one card in our deck. Let's have a quick... Yeah, here it is. I think that's really the last one. If you can get rid of this, ah, that would be pretty massive, actually. But it would change our plans. On the other hand, we could gain a spell right off the bat. And I think I will take my chances here. So we will discard or bury this fella. We will, it's, it's our faction, by the way, of course. Uh, we will spend two coins in order to get him, which means we get the last 
plus two card. I will put it into the deck into a second off camera and we will hand it over to Man at Arms. And in theory, we will, yeah, I think we will trigger it right away, right? When, when would be the perfect time, but not now. Or if not now, as a free action, roll two dice. So, oh, we need two successes. Okay, only on two planks we will discard. Otherwise, we will keep him. Okay, that's, that's definitely something. So I think this is not a blank. That's how I will rule him. And awesome. That's two successes even. Oh, that's so amazing. We will draw the top card of the spell deck. So let's see what we get. It's a slowdown. This one says your opponent gains mine. Oh, that is not terrible. Awesome. Um, so basically we have gotten this not for free. We basically paid the points, but we still have received the upgrade and we could use Orko's ability next round again. I mean, that was pretty helpful. Nice find there, man at arms. Okay, and then next round, we will first of all move these fellas in here. They will take care of those. And then we will move him in and we'll trigger the combat. So we will simply try to get rid of those suckers here. As for Tila, I think uh, she's in a better position actually to fight. And that's the problem. That's really, the, she's in a better position than Stratos. Okay, what we could do with her, we could move her here, then move her there to whatever exchange it. The, still the problem is she's awfully far away then from Castle Greyskull afterwards. Oof, okay, maybe I should have done something differently. We could still do that actually. We could still, no, we can't. I could still start with him, move him here, um, do something else with other things, I don't know. Mm, and then she would move in here and would trade. Or we simply say, what the heck? And I think that's actually what I'm going to do. We will go next with Stratos and I think I think we will go for something. If we get now something cool, an ally, then he is in an okay shape. Yeah, let's do that. Let me start with him. We will draw a card and in theory, we could still spend the money. So we will spend the money to draw two cards here. This could be, oh, it's another ally actually. Mechanic and Panthor is back. The plus two doesn't really help us at all and I think we will not go for Panther anyway. So it's either Mechanic or nothing. The plus two doesn't help us. What's the hero bonus? Once per epic combat after playing a card into one of your zones immediately drawn play. That's nice but for three I think I would rather go for something else. So what will happen is I think we will bury this. We will not take this fella therefore we gain one Eternium instead and then we shuffle this card back into the deck. It wasn't great and yeah, we simply, yeah, we just got the money back, right? That's the problem. And we still have an action left actually and that's now the thing. Of course we could move those soldiers in there. Yeah, they would generate one more. So I think this doesn't help. I think it was pretty stupid starting with him. And uh, it depends. And we can't move him here because he will not be able to take thing unless again we are using one coin to move him twice but what what good does it bring us to move him here actually we could move him here but we are not getting into a day turn next round so we're not getting any money so i think we will simply forfeit his action still we will pay five money to buy him blaster hawk so he gets a constant plus two plus one now and we get this one here so that's definitely helpful let's reveal a new vehicle card so let's see what it is battle ram gain plus one body a hero maker both battle ram and sky sled. Yeah, that's nice the sky sled together with that also allows you to move so you can really move an awful lot of distance. The body ability again is something more for those wilds encounters. Could be a good early game card, but I think for now we will hold off on this. So that was Stratos. Let's move over to Tila. And with our spells and upgrade of Blaster Hawk um, and combat deck, I really have to trust both Man at Arms and Stratos. So we will move her here. And here she will go for an encounter. Are we spending the money or not? I mean, he has now, do we need the money? I think we don't, right? We spend the money right now to draw two cards for her as well. So she's braving the wild. Okay, that is another beast. And we have, oh, Eternium Cash sounds good. So this might be a no brainer. 
While traveling, you happen across a satchel containing some small green crystals. It's eternium. Gain three eternium. Okay. Oh, yeah, I think, yeah, we get three eternium. <laughs> we gained two out of this, so I'm okay. I don't want her to suffer any more hits, actually. So this goes to the bottom of the stack and this gets discarded. I take that, but that's again the end of our round, actually, which means... Faker is moving one space closer to Castle Greyskull. I don't really know which path he is taking. I think it doesn't matter. So it should be more detrimental. So it seems like moving him here would be more detrimental for us because then we can't get there. We can't go through that actually. It doesn't matter. So I think it doesn't really matter too much yeah and then we move into the next round of the game and yeah i think ah, we can't make it i i don't think we can make it actually we are running out of time right i think skeletor will appear over here i mean we can yeah we can push it actually in theory you can wrap around the map by the way you see these little arrows here this is really a ball this is, seems to be the whole planet of eternia so we could go there still but we really have to rush things through yes he can now may basically move three spaces actually if we are paying for him but yeah it will be a very very close call so all the more reason now to make some progress questions or oh, we could still Still have Tila go first and maybe buy even another spell. We have the money now. We could go for a search indeed. So I think let's totally do that. We need to get all the help that we can get actually. So we are moving her here. Um, we will draw an encounter. I don't think we are spending any money here. So you are on your own lady. And this is fool's gold. Come across an old man digging small holes in the ground. I'm searching for a small chest of gold. I buried here when I was younger. If you could help me find it, I'll glad you make it worth your while. You may give the old man five eternium to give to gain a card. Roll a die. Or roll a die. Yeah, let's let's roll a die in this case because we don't have the five eternium. So let's see. It's a standard. What do we need? A success. Okay. It is a success. So now we could gain another search card. Again, search cards are pretty amazing because they trigger your search ability. I think we have only one in the deck, actually. They still count as a one, though. The problem is we are out of ones now, so we would remove a two from the deck. But I still think that this might actually be worth it. So we are removing the two from our deck and adding the search ability. So yeah, I think overall it was an okay turn for her, not complaining here. And with two money, we are buying the search spell here. Again, we have to hand it over to Tila. Every hero can hold up to two spells, by the way. That's also, it matters who is buying those spells. I think Skeletor can hold three, if I remember correctly, exactly, and also gets a discount on spells. But that was her turn done actually uh, let's go over to man at arms for his first action he will mobilize so he will send those guys over here now it's a soldier versus hero slash soldier combat in a multiplayer game the targeted factional now here the um, evil warriors would get to choose how they, they they do three hits that's basically what they do now so they can now distribute those between their soldiers and their heroes Honestly, I do not 100% or don't really know what is better now. I haven't really played this game an awful lot. Having those soldiers in your back pockets during combat might be extremely valuable to balance things out a little bit. I really don't know. Should I roll a die or should I simply say we will remove the three soldiers? Again, I, normally you are, you're being told to be as detrimental to yourself as possible. I really don't know what, what's more detrimental now. That's my problem. So I think I will simply make things easier, right? I will simply remove the three soldiers. They also die. They also take three points worth of damage. But that was basically the whole idea. And with our second movement, we will trigger our first epic fight. And I just noticed something before I forget, before I move, I will use Orko again to roll two dice because he can still hold another spell, right? So yeah, let's see. <laughs> These are two blanks. Of course, Orko failed. 
So he's discarded, right? So he's first of all out of the game. So we are not getting any more spells, but at least I remember that's important. And now we are triggering the fight. The first step is, and this is now a little bit different between solo, cooperative and, and the multiplayer game. I have to choose my weapon now first. And this defines what's my search ability for this fight. So we could go for the arm cannon plus two is pretty nice actually. So let's do that here. Or the maze after drawing your last combat card, draw another one, play one and discard the other here. I do actually think that this might be the better deal because we have upgraded our combat deck quite a bit actually. So I think I will decide to go with arm cannon so we will notify this and now we do something very similar but a little bit more random for triclops his weapons is either a longsword triclops special combat cards on the grid count as plus two instead of plus one that's pretty massive that's a very massive thing actually Oof. okay and then we have the gamma beam Game plus one. Okay, that's both pretty nasty, actually. First of all, we need to define which deck of combat cards we are drawing from. So we are rolling a die. And depending on your difficulty level, I think we are now drawing a card on a blank or reroll, draw a search card, otherwise a non-search card. I think that this is already a good thing. Okay, I take that. That is nice, which means we are taking the battle deck without, let's see, without the search ability from here. I will shuffle this and then, yeah, we will go over to step two, I believe. Okay, not so fast. Uh, still, as part of step one, we are drawing battle cards until we are finding a weapon that is part of, or it has a corresponding icon. There is a third weapon type, which is magical, but neither man at arms nor triclops has that. So let's draw the topmost card or continue to draw. If that would have been a magic card, we would keep drawing. So he is also using a melee weapon, um, his long sword, which again, they're both either similarly nasty. And we already know um, basically what combat stats he has. So that's pretty heavy actually. Five attack, four defense. The five initiative is really alarming actually. Okay, next we would trigger any start of combat abilities. That's something we are not doing here because neither of those do have one of those special abilities. No, they don't don't. In solo we are not rolling the epic die when we are fighting those fellas. Um, this is something that we already have taken care of with this card. We will still draw one of those cards, basically one of those battle effect cards, but only after the next step. So we already have an idea what we need to come up with. We know we are getting five hits. We They will block or Triclops will block four and he has a initiative of five. Again, initiative of five is pretty heavy. If we can somehow manage to trigger our arm cannon, oops, we would gain a plus two on our own. But of course, this is where those combat cards come into the picture. And we draw them now one by one, actually, and get to choose where to place them. There are some rules to those, but I will come to those. So let's start into step three, actually. And of course, we must remember we have the blade armor. So one attack is already blocked. <laughs> let's put it like this. Okay, we are drawing four cards or a little bit more depends on the cards we are drawing and again for each card we have to place it. Well, this is one of our upgraded cards and we have to make a choice and this is now in the multiplayer game where you don't show these cards they go face down in front of these unless you're playing a, a special effect card this is these are the cards that you reveal automatically but this is something where you can really on one side um, strategize and so it, it's really a very nice combat mechanic I like this one a lot. So with this two we have to make a choice uh, where to place this. We do know there aren't really a lot of ones other than the special ability cards and oh I think we are actually lucky with yeah okay no I think I just looked at Triclops special ability again and because we are not doing any of those no I think we are fine actually <laughs> I think we are really fine. Uh, special combat cards on the grip count as plus two instead of a plus one. The thing is he doesn't draw any combat cards right? Okay, I take that. Currently, I'm not overly concerned about my defenses. Again, we can do better than a two. There are some threes in there, but I think let's go with a two over here. Then we draw the next card, and the next card can't go into the same row. 
we have to assign it somewhere else and it's also another two. That's kind of underwhelming, but I do think we want to play it here for now. Now we are drawing the third card and oh, come on, also only a two, that's not enough. Again, now we can make a choice if you want to play it here or there. I already see that it's not going our way. So I think we have to place it here. Again, we would do two combat rounds, by the way. Maybe I should have mentioned that. And then we drawing the, in theory, fourth and a last card. Again, we still have other things. Um, okay, that's a plus three, which we can either place here or there. So now we have to make a call. Um, with five damage, uh, we would only do one point, or five attack, we would only do one point of damage. But again, it depends a little bit on which... Thing so we still have spells and whatnot, which we may need to, ah, I still have something we need to consider. If we play it down here, we would definitely win the initiative, but here I'm really not so sure if that makes a difference or not, right? For the second round of combat, maybe, but we are taking two hits, which is not terrible. Two hits is really not terrible. So I guess... We will do something like this. We'll play this card up here. Those are our four combat cards we are allowed to play. Again, unfortunately, we didn't draw any bonus cards or any of our special cards. So we are not triggering any of our special abilities. But again, the, the combat round is still not over yet. Now we come to step four. For basically where we're activating our abilities. And again, we go first. Hmm. The question now really is, do we want, I think we want some, yeah, let's, 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 let's go places. We will play for our first, let's say, combat action now to play the Berserk. This is coming from Stratos, but again, we are allowed to play these cards, which says draw and place an additional combat card. Because we are now have left step three again, I can place this combat card wherever I want it to be. At least that's my understanding. It's another plus two, and I think we have to place the plus two in here simply to make some more damage. But this concludes this card and then we are moving over to triclops and he will now trigger this effect but honestly i just checked and i have to take all my actions before i know what he is up to so that's kind of a bummer we still have some spells left in our pocket but i think i will hold off I think I will hold off. We still have our counterattack, but we will play the counterattack once we get some damage. That is still allowed. So I think we will stop here for step four. So now we are drawing that many combat effect cards here. And luckily we only have a one. So let's draw that card and it gives him an additional plus one on his initiative, which is now, oh, wait a second. Um, this is a seven actually, right? He has a core thing of two. And one thing, oh, one thing I also forgot, but I think it's not the end of the world. You can basically replace your combat cards up to the level of your mind ability. This one up here again, it's nothing that Triclops would do. We could have done that, but um, as this is true for the entirety of the combat, um, this value, so you can only do that twice during the whole combat, I think we may want to hold off on this. So I think overall we were kind of lucky here. Which which also means he has now the initiative, so he is doing five points worth of damage against our three in total, because again, we still have our armor, right? So this and that exactly, which again means we are taking two hits, not the end of the world for him. He has seven left, so I definitely do take that. Question is, are we going to play the counterattack now or are we holding off? until it really matters and I think that's what we are going to do unless we will take him down right now which yeah I think it's not going to happen because now we get seven points of attack versus four defense that's three plus the two would make it to five so it's not enough to take him out anyway so no I think we will simply hand him over three damage and I think that's more or less the end of the combat round. 
Now we can decide to flee. I think we are not going to flee. We will discard these battle cards. We will not get them back right away, actually. So that's definitely important. Um, and I think we also do, I think, yeah, we are removing this, but we will hold on to this card here. So he's still following up on this card, which I think is still okay. We know what he's up to. We know he's not triggering any abilities. And then, yeah, we will move into step two. Uh, we don't have any start of activate, uh, start of turn, combat turn abilities or so. So in theory, yeah, we will basically start placing cards onto our grid. So we already know the drill. First card here. Okay, that's one of the search abilities. Counts as a plus one and hero gains a search activation, which means we can now a plus two. I'm not sure if this is something that is triggering now or later, honestly. It doesn't matter too much. It will be a combat action. I believe at least it's simply a plus two, right? I think we will place it down here or in here because it's only a plus one. And I think with that, we should be okay. We shouldn't die. So we know we have a plus two on our initiative already, which is really, really nice. And we still have the slowdown here. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Then let's draw the second card. Oh, <laughs> it's another one of those. Okay, this might not be enough now. I think we have, do we have to place it there actually? Or do we want... Uh, let's do this. So we will trigger a search ability twice. So we have a fire. I think we will be good here. Then let's continue to draw. This is three. The three will totally go in here. And that's now the bummer. Our fourth card is... Okay, that's one of these other flux cards. It's still a plus one. Does not count for the four. Immediately draw and place another combat card. So this worked out okay. So we are placing this in here. It's still a plus one, but we will get to draw a additional card, which still has to go into a different row. But I think, yeah, having this on the five might actually, I think this could secure us the combat, actually. I still think that this could secure us the combat here. So overall, we have five attack. We have three defense again, including our plate armor. And we have four, five, plus two, seven. Seven initiative. Ah, okay. Let's see about that. So now we get to play our combat cards. And I think we are not going to play our search card because we already have two surges in there. We could simply make sure to use the slowdown, but I think it doesn't matter, actually. I really do think it doesn't matter too much. No, we will not play any more combat cards or combat abilities or whatnot. We will draw our card and that gets a plus one. It's a consumable. Okay, he's healing. That could be the problem. I think that might be the problem. That might be though. It's healing. Hero heals. It's a consumable. It's out. It's only drawing one of those cards. It's at least one relief. But I think this might have been the worst result actually for us. I would have taken more damage actually gladly. Really gladly. So he has five damage left. And I think with that, it's not enough. So let's see. Mm, now we are comparing our stats. He has a seven and we have a seven, right? Which I believe means we get to go first on a tie. So five, two, seven. And we had also seven. Yes. One thing I forgot, we should have one more damage actually because um, the winner of the initiative also deals one more damage, which might have mattered here, but I have drawn cards. That was really a crucial thing. You shouldn't forget about those. Getting this one extra hit could be extremely, extremely important, actually. But still, let's see. We are the winner of the initiative because we are tight. And then this means we get to uh, resolve our attacks and so on first, right? So we have a five, nothing to add here, right? There's nothing else. Oh, that's terrible. That's really terrible. Five versus four is basically one damage. And yeah, this will not be enough. So we are taking in here. Then, yeah, that's, I think we will even lose this fight now. We will not die, I believe, but we will still lose the combat. And I think then we can pretty much 
call it a gain actually. So then um, we have done our damage, then he will do his damage. And that's a five versus our one, two and three. It's also two points worth of damage. So we are at five, still alive. So still alive though. The thing now really is, I believe we have to play our counter attack unless it really makes a difference in respect who has won. But I think it's basically a boss which says if you did not defeat the boss. I think it really counts as a boss. And indeed that's the case. How do I resolve combat with AI especially step 9? During combat with AI you should follow the boss section for step 9. Which then says if you do not defeat the boss, the boss card remains in play and damage dealt to it remains on the boss card. Okay, that's at least something. Your hero will retreat to an adjacent area when the combat is resolved. Okay. Okay, nice. All teams lose the game if a boss is in play at the end of the game. Okay, we, we already know that. Okay, the important piece is Triclops holds on to his yeah, only three damage. But that's now all the more reason actually to play the counter attack now. Um, so it's out of the game. We have taken damage, which means we are all stealing two damage to the other side. So he's at five. So he needs two more hits basically in order to be defeated. So we could manage that. Then we will, does it matter? We will simply go in here. I don't know. And then I will do some cleanup. Now we will reshuffle all our decks. We haven't used the slowdown here. It wouldn't have made a difference if we would have not drawn this dreadful consumable here we would have won that actually that was really that what i mentioned this could have been the most terrible cards we have drawn really dealing damage in this game isn't easy um if you're not drawing the right amount of cards maybe i should have replaced those cards actually again i didn't pay attention but again i really do like this a lot and it seems to work perfectly in the solo slash cooperative mode of the game so nice Unfortunately, this also means we can't trigger the dual ability here, but I'm not so concerned about this. It's the end of a night activation, which means we get to heal actually down to four. Hmm. So we could really consider to go there again, actually, with his next activation. That's really no, very, very tempting, actually. But I still think we have Stratos. Looking at him, I really don't know if that would make sense to go through a combat now or not. I think we have to do that. We have the Plaster Hawk, which would give us a plus two and a plus one for, against a shield for melee weapons. So that could be two auto hits, basically, which I think might change an awful lot. I think so. For his weapons, we have the Staff of Avion. After drawing the last combat card, you will replace one of your, from your discard pile. Which also is not terrible, or the Flamethrower Immediate. That's an immediate one your opponent loses one half. This also could make or break things. And we have these things in there. So I guess, I guess we will go there again. We have to make progress. We are really running out of time and I want to be, yeah, let's, let's totally do that. This time I will try to not forget that. We will do the same thing. We will move them here. We will remove them here with our second action. We will move in here. The one problem is we don't really have an awful lot of spells anymore unless doing, yeah, I think one second. We still had one more money left and he can still buy stuff. Play immediately after you roll one or more dice or after drawing a common card, re-roll any number of dice or discard the card and draw a new one. Yeah. This is nice, but we have, we didn't use the mind ability here anyway. Still, why not? Let's do that. So we will give this over to, yeah, he can hold it. We will hand this over to Man at Arms. We have the discount, why not? So then basically the same things apply. Again, I have to choose which weapon. And again, I'm relatively certain I want to go with the flamethrower here because again, we could really do think three points worth of damage alone from our search spell and maybe through the two of our search cards in the deck. Let's do that. And then, yeah, it's basically we have to determine which deck Beastman is using. So we are rolling the die. And again, we are successful. So we are not drawing from the search deck. I, I really do think that this is pretty massive, actually. So I take it at least we're getting some break here. Um, oh, but that's not pretty. Are you kidding me? That's 
much worse. Oh God, you're going down Stratos. Oh boy, that will be a tough call for sure. Yeah, two of these, five, four, six. If these would have been low, I mean, these are completely random, it seems. Okay, that's bad. That's really bad. Okay, let's set up the battlefield. So we are bringing over Stratos. And at least we are doing some damage. And if we are now playing our cards correctly, we have one more here, the initiative. This kind of could help us, but yeah, I think it will be, will be very close call. We don't have any start of combat round ability. So I think we can immediately go into yeah, drawing our cards. I have reshuffled that deck, so let's see what we get. Uh, that's a plus two. I mean, that's a, our lowest normal card in that deck, right? And that's even a starting card. We see that here. The question now really is, where do we want to put that? I think, and he's using melee weapons. That's important. We have a plus one defense, so I think that does help. I think this does help. The question is, will we come... I think we will only draw in four. No, we will put it here. I think it's, it's at least two points worth of damage or potential points worth of damage. Let's draw the second card. Searchability. I think this triggers immediately and I guess we will place the searchability down here. And because we have chosen our flamethrower, we are immediately dealing one point of damage to Beastman. That is not bad. Question is, okay, wait, wait a second. Question is, do we want to really place it here? Oh, down there. No, I think we will place it down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's do that. Then and third card, another search ability. Can't go here, so I think in this case it will go down here, actually. Again, we are immediately dealing one point worth of damage. Okay, but I think it will not be enough anyway. We will continue. We still have one more draw, and that's one of those. Okay, we can't do it here. We have to do it here or there. Does it matter, actually? I think we will place it here, and then we will draw a replacement card, and that's another plus two, which doesn't really help us, I believe, because it could. In fact, it could. So let's do place it over here. No. Now we are basically using our mind ability. I think we have to start doing that, right? So we can't do that twice, actually, during our combat. So we will discard this card and we'll replay, uh, draw a replacement card for that. That's also plus two. Do we want to do that again or do we want to wait for the next round? I think let's wait for the next round. We will place it here and that's basically our turn done. We could still go with our luck thing, but I don't think so. How much? Yeah, we don't have an awful lot of which could, uh, mm, this, let, let's see, maybe again, we are doing one auto damage if we're doing something like this, right? So if we're doing it here, we have three, we have six there at eight right now. Mm, I think this doesn't really help us. I think this doesn't really help us. And I just noticed something, actually, we will be successful in a second. Um, we have another spell in our pocket. I will call it, we have missed, but we will still do that. So we will, I think we will only tie. Three plus three is six. There at eight, if we are playing the slowdown, they will also. So I think it doesn't matter. I mean, we could tie not to take a damage, but honestly, I think, I still think we are better off here. Now we will play our combat cards. Mm, we could go for the search again, but I don't think it matters. We will hold off until it really does matter. We are not going for the luck. That's something we should have played anyway. And the card I was mentioning is the thunder here. Deal two damage to an enemy soldier or two soldier or two damage to an enemy hero. And that's the one we are assigning to Triclops. So he will be dead. That would have been the first basically free action that, I don't know, Stratos would have taken. So this is already kind of gone, but still something we need to remember. So Triclops is actually defeated. That's nice. Still, let's, let's, let's focus on this, this battle here. Mm, 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 mm. And we can still do that next round anyway. It doesn't matter. So no, I think we are not playing any more cards right now, any more 
combat actions whatsoever. So let's draw those effect cards. And that's two now. That's that's really a massive thing. So one is hero heals. You must be joking. You must be joking. Second one, Apollo. We are losing one life point, which I don't know. Well, it depends now a little bit. Okay, but those were the two basically combat actions they were taking after we have taken ours. They have clearly the lead in respect to initiative, which means they go first and they will assign two more hits here, right? Yep, that's the case. That's really bad. Um, then they will do five points worth of damage versus our, I think, three actually, right? One, two, three indeed so we are at five hits almost dead almost dead or defeated you're really not dying here so we are moving into the next round of combat we are not going to flee we don't have the money to flee i think you have to spend two eternium to flee so that's not going to happen and then yeah we know we have to keep drawing cards as a reminder i will put this eternium here so we have used this mind ability once basically and we still have the luck card so let's keep going right so that's okay that's a timed card place near the combat grid and draw another card maybe activate it to swap two of your cards so that's very nice later on at the end of the thing you can basically um exchange cards not so powerful in a solo game i think at least now nah, it depends a little bit um it's something that you can do during your ability so maybe it uh, depends how how well you're drawing but we are drawing a replacement card for that and that's okay one of those hmm i think i do not care about this one here actually too much so i think let's place this one here and for that we are also drawing a replacement card right so let's do that. That's only a plus two. That is not enough. That is not enough. Boom. Okay. It's still only one card that we have drawn. And I have to, I don't know, I will use Eterniums to track that now. Because again, this was a replacement for this. This was the additional card we have drawn for this. So we are still in after our very first card. So let's keep drawing and that's another two hmm i think i will use my second ability here to um discard this card and i will redraw and that's a plus three this goes in here for sure nice so this was our second card we have played exactly now we are playing our third official card that's another plus three which we can't put in here but i will definitely put that down there so we are doing okay in respect to the initiative. Yes, indeed. Uh, that was our third card. And now we are playing our fourth card. That's another plus two. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Does it matter? I think we will use our luck ability um, to redraw this card. It's also plus two, which goes in here. And that was the four cards, right? So one, two, three, four, exactly. Now we get to play our combat abilities. And we can still, for a combat ability, replace these things. Oh, that's nice. So we could say, we have to count this, we could replace the two with this one here, or the other way around, uh, depending a little bit on how the thing is, we need to come up with six damage points and we have to be first but let's not forget we have a plus two here as well so overall we are doing seven minus four so that's four points but is it enough because if we go down first then that's dead okay i think i have to gamble here i i counted this through and i think we have to gamble so first of all we will trigger this ability and we'll exchange those two cards yeah 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 that's that's that so we have dealt with this card then we will play the search card which triggers our search ability which gives him one more damage point here but this card is now also gone yeah so now i think that's basically everything we can do right now i think we need to play the slowdown now actually yes we need to play the slowdown to decrease his plus uh his initiative so basically he's at six right now and we are at seven that's basically 
where my gambling comes into the picture. And then that's basically it. We are out of spells that we can use right now. So we have to draw the effect cards for him. No, no, I think that's exactly what we can't afford. And Oh, he is triggering his search ability. I think he was using the sword, right? I think he was using the sword. No, no. <laughs> this gives him the one point we needed to kill. No, this was so ultra bad. <laughs> oh gosh. Immediate, the opponent loses one health. That's exactly enough to kill him before we do any other resolution whatsoever. So in theory, let's say if he would have, at least if he wouldn't have drawn these two, basically both cards were bad. We would have won the initiative, right? Of course, he could have done drawn maybe another. What 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 other cards do we have? More defense or so. Another heal that would have been equally bad actually. So I think we would have made it if because he would have gotten one more damage because we have would have won the initiative. Then we are at six plus two. That's eight minus four. This would have been exactly enough. But in theory, because yeah, I think it was simply too tight, actually. Yeah, we have lost. So we are losing now five money or we have to discard basically items worth of five or less. So I think we are even now losing our blaster hawk here because we have zero money in there. We are not getting any returns whatsoever. And I think he needs to lose that. Yeah, I think that's pretty much, I think it's really game over. We will not recover from that. So I will now clean up a little bit because what's happening next now, he's been back to Grass or Grayskull. Again, we have to lose five points worth of stuff, either money or equipment or whatnot. So we will have to get rid of our blaster hawk here. He still contains his two things, but I believe the combat was over right here and there. Once you are down to zero, at least that's my understanding, right? Or maybe not. Okay, let me, let me check. Let me check. When do you actually check when you are killed? Maybe we do some more damage actually. Beast boss. Yeah, okay. Mm, we would still have resolved damage in initiative order. No. Yeah, we immediately proceed to step seven. No, no, I think we are okay. We, we, sh we If you are, it, you immediately jump there. I think we are not resolving the combat. I could be wrong. Maybe Beastman should have now some more damage, which definitely might make a big difference, of course. But I think game-wise, it doesn't really matter a lot. Um, this was basically our thing. I think he's getting fully healed as far as I remember. Um, we will now basically, um, with the next round, play the Thunder card which would deal two more damage to Triclops, so Triclops is down. He will come back at the end of the round at Temple of Serpent, or I think at the end of the next round or so, then he will move back to Mount Eternium. Um, we would still not control Mount Eternium, but again, we would have defeated at least one of these guys. Definitely nasty tools though, but I take it anyway. Then Faker would move one step down. We would still not know that it is Faker because we haven't defeated Skeletor who hasn't even appeared yet. If it would have been successful, then yes, Skeletor would have um, basically shown up. The problem now really is we are moving into the pen ultimate round. We would still gain some money. We could buy stuff back, which is not terrible. The thing is we wouldn't be able to make it to Beastman here. I think there is no chance actually. Skeletor would be here. So we would have to go there and then in here, which in theory could work through a tower, but then we have to go into a tower first. So I think we can basically call this a game. And quite honestly, I'm very happy that this happened because I would have hated to win this scenario with the first go. Again, the main reason I'm doing this poorly was that I, I think I spent too much time over here. I should have started and moved them further out so to be ready in order to take them out. Maybe in even two attacks or so that's that we wouldn't have to rely on 
individual heroics, for example. So I think this would have been the better deal and then I could have moved back. So I think after two turns, we could have taken them out. And again, we only need to defeat them once and then we can stop worrying about that and whatnot. So I think this is where you need to learn about the scenario a little bit. I stole for too long and maybe I also spent too much money on these encounters. This could have been money we could have used for additional spells or better items, better equipment or whatnot. So I think that was definitely a lesson learned here. Anyway, I definitely did enjoy this big deal. I do think the solo corporate mode works pretty well. I like it a lot. So job well done. And I really hope you enjoyed it too. And yeah, before I forget, huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members. You guys are truly amazing. Really can't tell you how much I appreciate all your support. So if you want to join my little channel, you will find my link, uh, link to my Patreon. Patreon, you can join me here on YouTube. Like and subscribe, leave a comment. There is a thanks button below the video for a small or not so small donation. Everything helps. And with that being said, yeah, hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And until then, bye bye.